penis side. 60% of your blood is sitting on the penis side, waiting to be called upon when needed. And that happens with genetics. There is a genetic component to it as well. So yes, there's a genetic component to the faultiness in the in the. But we do believe that there's a can it. The genetics and lack of exercise together play this role in the overall development. It's what we call multifactorial diseases. Most of what affects humans, about half of all the diseases, I believe, if not more, are really multifactorial. There's several, several, several events that need to occur over time, a certain period of time for the now. If it starts in young, then I would tell you that's more genetics. But if it's something that you see like within a family, but when they're older, then I would look more towards what, what's their exercise, what's their eating habits, because if they're small nucleus families, like, like Hispanics are and whatnot, um, African Americans, same way, right? And then what happens is, man, you love eating pig. Like, I'm a Puerto Rican, man, so I'm both, I'm both Hispanic, I'm Latino, but I'm African American, it's all a mix, right? So, Caribbean people, man, we eat like crap, right? Because it's good. <laughs> King is delicious, right? It's not good for you. I realized this, you know why? Because I fed my doggy some pig, right, over the winter break, and it just didn't agree with him. I'm like, hmm, if my doggy can't eat pork, then that means I shouldn't eat pork. No, no, I'm giving up pork, but, you know. But see, though, my doggy can't, he can't, he can't enjoy what I enjoy. <laughs> so, oh, wow, right? Um, I'm not giving up pork, though. I don't care. They had some bacon strips, some real long bacon strips. Love me some bacon. All right. Guys, this is important because... In genetics, so let's say you get a 15 year old comes in and he gets tested and he's got this familiar form of hypertriglyceridemia or hypercholesterolemia. What are they talking about? Blood plasma, guys, isn't just what I wrote up here plus the cells, there's other stuff. So let me add so there's this, there's this, there's also this. So this is a fourth criterion the blood plasma. There are uh, cholesterol, cholesterol esters, uh, acids and bases of cholesterol that when in excess float around the bloodstream, they start to deposit in the wall of the artery. See that? They cause fatty streaks in the blood vessel wall. They lead to coronary artery disease when it's in the heart. They lead to atherosclerosis or mockingbirds, what they call mockingbirds, calcific sclerosis, where when this stuff starts piling up in the blood vessel wall, just under the simple squamous epithelium and the muscle, the smooth muscle that makes it up, huh? then calcium starts coming in. And then two, you get saponification because macrophages come in, white blood cells, try to remove it and they can't. And what that becomes, it just becomes bigger and bigger and it becomes a coagulation. You got me yet? It can become, it can lead to a coagulation, but it's actual an atherosclerotic, sclerotic plaque. An atherosclerotic plaque. You understand guys? So the blood plasma transports these cholesterol acids and bases. Transports. Cholesterol esters, acids and bases in the form Oh, HDLs, IDLs, LDLs, VLDLs, and uh, chylomicron. Any lipid that you would consume in diet gets broken down. Lipids, fatty acids, whatever. At the epithelial lining, they'll break it down, they'll reassemble it into, and then reabsorb it into chylomicrons. Those chylomicrons enter into the bloodstream between GI and liver, because I told you already, GI goes directly to liver. The venous system of the GI is pulled to liver first. So these chylomicrons go from blood, from GI to liver, and in the liver, they'll convert these chylomicrons into IDLs, LDLs, VLDLs, and HDLs, guys. You got me? So the blood plasma, we can get a lot of information by pulling blood, guys. You get me? Let me hey let me get their let me get their cholesterol panel, huh? HDL, IDL, VLDL, triglycerides. Got it all. We don't measure chylomicrons, okay? 
But believe me when I tell you, it starts with the chylomicron. That's, um, you see how I can jump around easily, guys, but we're, all, we're, we're still talking about cardiovascular. This is how important the cardiovascular system is. The cardiovascular system is designed to carry what? To carry nutrients, meta and uh, nutrients to, and metabolic waste from. It's meant to take hormones to, and hormones from. Do you agree? Need negative feedback. Yeah. How else do my testicle? How else does my brain know that the testicles got their signal? Ah, uh, because the the hormone levels, testosterone levels, uh, climbed up high enough to go back and negatively feedback. They go through blood, guys. So blood plasma also doesn't just transport cholesterol acids, acids and bases in the form of HDLs, IDLs, LDLs, VLDLs, and chylomicrons. It's also responsible for the transport of hormones. Does everyone agree? And, and then, of course, the transport of hormones, I'll put a star here, transport hormones. Some of those hormones are, are, are protein hormones. So what do we have to talk about? Ah, blood plasma, albumin, huh? Albumin is not a hormone, it's a protein carrier, and albumin protein carrier slash regulator of reabsorption of fluid at the capillary. As you hear me? It's albumin as a protein. Watch me, very, very simple, very simple. Imagine me. Here, I'm albumin. In my tube. And this is the arterial end of the capillary. And this would be the venous end. Well, fluid at the arterial end of the capillary, is the, the pressure is high. Because remember we said when the heart beats, the system's designed to do what? Oh, no. Snap back. It's meant to mimic the heart, at least try to mimic the heart. So what we see is this kind of maintenance and pressure, and then all of a sudden it starts to drop because why? Because the number of blood vessels become greater. They each become smaller, but there's more numerous branches. As we, we go from one big branch, we diverge. Everybody get me? To get down to capillary. Then once we're at capillary, then at capillary, we're going to converge again to create venous system. Everybody understand that? So capillary is this huge divergence. To form a capillary, but you got to have this huge divergence. you got to go from one to many. Yeah? But then to get that metabolic waste back, all right, to get that carbon dioxide back to the lung, got to get it back to the left side of the heart. we got to what? Converge to smaller vessels, from smaller vessels to larger vessels, and less of them. So they're bigger, we're going from smaller vessels to larger vessels, but we're going from many smaller blood vessels, right, to now larger, less numbered veins. So we're going artery to arterioles, arterioles to capillaries, capillaries to venules, venules to veins. Guys, you got me? Yes. And it's going, and it's doing that for each organ. So sure enough, this is why, Physics again. There's resistance every time you do this. There's resistance every time you create a small vessel. See that? So this is really I'm right, I'm drawing a circuit. This is a circuit, an electrical circuit in physics. Well, I can tell you that the same way you draw an electrical circuit in physics, okay? These are in parallel. This is a series of resistors in parallel. Well, sure enough, these could be the capillaries of the lung, or let's say the brain, the capillaries of the heart, and the capillaries of the kidney. <laughs> and you could argue that this would, could be the aorta, and that this could be uh, the vena cava, however you want to slice it. Guys, you see that? And, and so this is why it's called anatomy physiology. Now at the higher level, you know, that, there's this huge comparison that we, that, that we, uh, sorry, spelled that wrong. All right. Now, 
Sure enough, we don't have just in parallel, we have these things, these resistors that are, they're called in series, where they're lined up directly into each other. Sure enough, this is, uh, this would be left heart, sorry, right side heart, so right heart, this would be lung, and this would be left side heart. So, so wait, Professor P, you mean to tell me that that our, our capillaries are designed in both parallel and in series? Yeah, our cardiovascular system has figured out a way to, 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 to control blood pressure this way and then to be able to feed each of the capillaries. I told you we'd get complex, didn't I? It, what's amazing is, is that they're able to find this out. They were able to find this out in physics and then be able to reapply it to anatomy and physiology. Or maybe it was the other way around. Maybe it was that we found it in the body first, and then we figured out that 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 the same way blood flows through blood vessel walls is basically the same way electricity flows through wires. <gasps> huh? Probably. Because what? We're always trying to mimic what we find in nature. So does that make sense, guys? It does. And so this cardiovascular system derived from mesoderm, guys, the cardiovascular system derived from mesoderm is everything but these cells. Because these cells, and I don't know where my, where I put my red, my red is somewhere, I know I have a red somewhere. Yes, there it is, I put it up on the board. So I'm gonna rewrite these guys, these cells here. I'm gonna rewrite those cells because those cells are in fact different. There it is. That's it. That's it. All right. So here, yeah, that one is uh, chalk. So it doesn't quite work yet. All right. So here, where it says cells, I'm going to use a different color. Why? Because those cells, guys, are derived not from mesoderm. They're derived from hematopoietic stem cells, also known as H dot, S dot, C dot, HSCs, okay? Derived from hematopoietic stem cells that originate Um, in yolk sac. Well, here's the story. These HSCs, they leave the yolk sac. So uh, let me draw you a little, draw you a little story. I'll draw you a little story. Okay, you ready? There's yolk sac. Ready? Here's liver. And spleen. And then we draw another little circle. Call it bone. So the HSCs, guys, they come from the yolk sac. They originate in the yolk sac. And what happens is the yolk sac is going to get choked off when, the, when you form the umbilical cord. Because we're not chickens. And chickens need yolk sacs. And we're not chickens, but we need a yolk sac at least at some point in development. For what? For the purpose of giving rise. To these cells. You got me guys? And the yolk sac winds up being, sure enough, if you look it up, the yolk sac winds up being, you know what they call this, the yolk sac? Extra embryonic mesoderm. Interesting, huh? That it wasn't the mesoderm of the three layer disc in fetal development that, that, that gave rise to the red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets, but the extra embryonic mesoderm that's outside the developing fetus, that's why they call it extra embryonic, get me? The three layers for the embryo are ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Anything outside of that is gonna be extra embryonic. So sure enough, outside of what's the developing embryo, 
there are cells that were sitting in the yolk sac. They're like, yeah, yeah, hold up, wait for me. You can't do this without me. Why do I say that? Why would the red blood cells scream out, wait for me? You can't do this without me. What's the job of a red blood cell? Provides oxygen. Converts CO2 so that the CO2 levels don't climb in the bloodstream and you get excess gases because you could kill yourself if you accumulate too much gas in the blood vessels, in the, in the closed tube system. You hear me guys? Mm -hmm. This is what happens when you come up too quickly and you're dying. The gas levels expand too quickly. And you cause gas embolisms, you get me? This is important. So red blood cells don't just carry oxygen, they also carry carbon dioxide. Mm. And they convert carbon dioxide to bicarbonate. So the red blood cell has its job to do, but it's floating around in there. And it came from what? A different area of the developing fetus. But it was destined to leave where it came from and enter because it knew at some point it would not have that opportunity later. So as we start to close off and develop that umbilical cord, huh? The yolk sac that's sitting out here, developing with the primitive placenta, decides, hey, I got one thing to contrib contribute to you guys, and that's these red blood cells, that's these HSC cells, these hematopoietic stem cells. They don't look like much now, boy, but what I'm giving you is something special, because these cells are gonna give rise to your ability to carry oxygen, carry carbon dioxide, your ability to fight infection, and aid in your ability to coagulate blood. Did you hear me? To create a blood clot, specifically, to create a blood clot. Because to coagulate blood is one thing, but to create a blood clot is a whole other thing. Does everybody understand me? To make the blood plasma a little thicker is one thing, but to actually put a hole in the wall of a blood vessel, that takes both the coagulation factors with the activated platelets. Got me? And the platelets aren't cells, they're fractions of cells. And they're, but they're still what? They're still coming from that megakaryocyte that, that's from the hematopoietic stem cell. So the hematopoietic stem cell goes and leaves the yolk sac because it knows, yeah, I'm gonna get choked up, I'm not gonna have any opportunity, now is the time. So they leave and they go in to the liver and spleen. So through that umbilical tube that's formed, they leave the yolk sac and they enter to liver and spleen, which are the, which are the organs responsible for the synthesis of uh, red blood cells, for generating red blood cells for a time. Um, because there's really nothing else for them to do. Why? Because the liver is not what? You're not eating. You know what I agree? You only need your liver if you eat. You get me? If you're still hooked up to your umbilical cord, you're not eating. Mommy's eating. So mommy's liver and spleen better be hooked up properly. You got me? Your liver and spleen's got a whole nother job to do right now because you're not eating. We're not eating. We're swallowing our own urine. We're breathing our own urine. We're aquatic for the whole nine months. We're swimming in our own fecal material in our own urine, but it's not really fecal material because why? We're not eating. You understand, guys? We're drinking, we're swallowing, but we're not eating. So that's why we, you know, that metabolic waste that, that, that we would generate doesn't get generated until we eat and then we poop it out. Whatever metabolic waste we're generating is not from us eating, it's from what mommy's giving us, so we're just stealing it away. And then what, uh, whatever we produce is waste, we're giving it back to mommy. We're, we're giving mommy all our shit. You got me? We gotta let mommy deal with all our shit. Well, huh? That's what's happening. And so mommy has to figure out how to deal with all that, all that fetal waste because it's in her bloodstream. <laughs> And so see, you see what happens, man. One child attacks the system of a female. One child. You imagine having one back to back after another after another. It changes the body forever. You gotta give the time. So the HSC guys leave, leaves the yolk sac, goes into liver and spleen. But then what happens? We become more complicated. Does everyone agree? And the liver and spleen come online like, yo, 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 what's up, man? Yo, you can't expect me to, to deal with making coagulation factors and making angiotensinogen and making albumin and 
and uh, uh, me, me, you know, creating metabolic waste and doing all these other things. And then on top of that, you want me to be the site of hematopoiesis? Yeah, I don't think so, man. You got me overworked. You guys got to leave. You hear me? And the spleen's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. You want me to do what? You want me to be the site of hematopoiesis? Well, you know what? In, in, it's strange enough. When you have reduced hematopoiesis in bone, in diseases, sure enough, the liver tries to end the spleen you try to do. Guys, do you see that as being an issue? And an adult that's, that needs their liver and spleen to have their own specific functions, now you're going to have them do hematopoiesis as well? Do you guys see that as being an issue? It is, isn't it? The liver's got a whole bunch of other shit to do. It doesn't want to be responsible for the synthesis of red blood cells. This is the reason why they're stored in bone, ultimately. You get me? So the story is, hey, liver and spleen, yo, we'll handle you for now. We'll let you be here for now and do as you please and have to, you know, because we understand. We need you. We need you, hematopoietic stem cells. We need you to make those red blood cells, those white blood cells, those platelets, those megakaryocytes that give rise to platelets. Got me? But you can't stay here forever. Sort of like the in-laws, you know, they come to visit. They don't come to stay from the visit. And they go, leave! <laughs> So sure enough, the in-laws are moving down here to Florida, right? Because you just had a baby and they want to spend more time with you. So they move in waiting for their condominium to be built. But what's happening with bone? In embryological development, guys, does bone just show up by, oh my God, that's so amazing. Bone is so cool, man. It's been there since the day we were, we were no. no, no, no. It was cartilage first. Did everybody hear me? And then it got converted to bone. And then it cavitated. Eh? The cavitation of bone. The penthouse. The in-laws are waiting for the penthouse to be made. Because bone cavitation, bone cavitation is the signal for the HSCs that were in liver and spleen to now leave and go to bone. They're permanent residents, at least for some, at least for most. White blood cells, different story. Some of the white blood cells, they'll come from bone marrow. They, some of the white blood cells, they, they leave bone marrow and got other places to go because they got other jobs to do. Those are called the lymphocytes. Those are the ones that are going to give rise to our ability to fight infections, guys. You get me? So, man, blood plasma, huh? Pretty impressive, isn't it? Got a lot of it. I think I'm probably at least three quarters of the way down the chapter. So go through and read it, please. And I, and I probably done at least a quarter of each of the other two chapters. Please read the chapters, yes? And try to read them before class. It helps when you do. Right? Even if you skim through it and look at the pictures. Any questions? Uh, uh, don't worry. Oh, yeah, the, the girl, I was going to say, don't worry about real because I can use this. Okay. The fact that I have these. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Any questions? Yes. Remember, but don't put your first name. So if you're one or four, your student number, your student number. Yeah, the idea. So that, that first digit, you that one or four, don't put it in, and then write wall in and bubble it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. You make sure you put your student numbers. Yeah, make sure. Because I'm going to have to register everybody. Just, wait, let me get my phone running. Yeah.